I've come to the conclusion that there are three types of magic items in D&D. Random magic items, plot-driven magic items, and character-driven magic items. There's definite overlap within the categories, and I can explain each one further, but what if I could just invent a fourth type? That's what we'll be talking about today. There's a not-so-secret secret in the 5th edition, and it's that magic items are necessary to balance everything, despite what the writers might say. I mean, Xanathar's Guide literally says that the party is going to encounter over 100 magic items over the course of a full campaign, so they're kind of important. As I mentioned before, I see three main ways to introduce magic items to the players, but they each come with their own set of problems. Random magic items like an immovable rod or an alchemy jug can be really interesting for creative problem solving, but I find that the players don't have a connection to them. And it's a similar thing with plot-driven magic items, where it could be this really powerful artifact that is important to keep away from the antagonist, but again, unless there's a prior connection there to the item, it could just be the players are protecting it for plot purposes. Character-driven magic items are the ones that I find excite players the most, and why wouldn't they? Uh, oftentimes they're family swords passed down for generations, or spellbooks that encourage players to go find their roots, but unless you find a really good time to place them into the story, they can kind of show up in awkward places and not really drive the plot forward. If you've read the title of this video, then you can already guess the fourth type of magic item that I'd like to introduce. Character boons. Alright, they're, they're not really magic items, but they function in a very similar way. Abilities that players can have their characters use, and the difference is that you can introduce them in a form of character growth rather than a random magic item that someone picked up somewhere. Here's an example. The party has been trudging through a dungeon for the past few days, and they get cornered. Some kind of rat creatures get the drop on them, and things are looking grim. The warlock is backed into a corner, and they hear a voice in their head. Give me the reins, and all will be solved. The warlock nods, and his body temperature begins to rise, and his eyes glow an orange-yellow color. He rises from the ground, and the voice coming from his mouth is not his own. Be gone, peasants, he shouts, and the enemies flee, seeing this terrifying transformation, giving the party the opportunity to strike. This warlock example could be a really simple magic item that forces creatures within a 60-foot cone to make a wisdom save or be frightened for 1d4 rounds. Similar attributes could be given anywhere from growing horns to being able to cast resurrection once per day. The options are limitless. Of course, this isn't limited to warlocks or even classes. You could give a high-level gift the ability to use telekinesis once per day as a character boon, or a human that has been through a wild magic surge, the Chaos Bolt spell. It's fun and interesting and makes characters feel cool because they have something unique to them that they earned or experienced that wasn't just picked up off of a dungeon floor. So far, I've only mentioned new magic items, but you could easily convert a classic D&D magic item into one of these new character boons. The Ring of Free Action could be transformed into a character boon for the monk as she studies graceful movement and natural terrain with the ranger. The pipes of the sewers are usually an instrument that calls rats, but you could easily transform it into something where the druid has been feeding and training the local rodents and they come to his aid because he's so kind. You might have noticed that this takes a little bit of character involvement. That warlock example from earlier can be given in times of stress or need, but all the other examples require active participation by your players, which is never bad. But the most natural way to bring this up is probably in a session zero. And if you've already passed Session Zero, I would just bring it up now. Talk to players about being invested in role-playing, and that you, as a DM, will recognize the effort that they're putting into their characters. I found that being in character is so much fun when D&D incentivizes it. As a side note about attunement, I don't know how I feel about that for character boons. On the one hand, they can be very powerful if you provide them as you would a magic item, but on the other hand, maybe you can just balance that out by providing less powerful magic items, or just less items in general. I left a link down below to a document with just a few of my ideas on character boons, but feel free to brainstorm in the comments. 
As always, thanks for watching. Uh, we release themed homebrew packs bi-weekly on Patreon, and if you like the video, interact with it. Um, leave us a comment, a like or a dislike, um, you can subscribe, anything helps in these early days. Thanks very much.